Good morning. Morning, Apostle Emil. You're so welcome here. Right. Let's open our Bibles to Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Right, so Joshua 24, it's before Revelations and after Genesis. It's there. Okay, so we are reading from verse 14 through to verse 15. And it says the following. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors, worship beyond the Euphrates River and, the, and Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to say that again. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Say it with me. One, two, three. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. What's the man sorry? Amen. So our first point of here is fear the Lord and serve Him with faithfulness. Fear the Lord and serve Him with faithfulness. There's a fear that brings unfruitfulness, and there's a fear that brings fruitfulness. How can that be? How can I be, that be? Right? This fear that we're speaking about here, fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. This does not speak about trembling and running away. This speaks about reverence, reverence, revering him, standing in awe. And this standing in awe and revering him is bringing us into a lifestyle of faithfulness. This is what the scripture is saying of you. Fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. It produces the fruit of faithfulness in our lives. Or we can be bound by a fear that does not produce faithfulness. Or you can be faithful, but out of fear. But that is having a slave mentality. Not being a spiritual son. Not being part of the household of God. Not understanding his heart. You are slave and not free. There is a fear that produces the fruit of faithfulness, and there is a fear that produces the fruit of death. You can serve until you blew in your face, serve faithfully, but never become a son. Because you approach from a place of slavery. Is a reverent fear of the Lord upon your life? A reverence that brings faithfulness in your walk with him. Keep your finger there by Joshua 24. And let's page through to um, Proverbs 14, verse 26. Proverbs 14. Are we reading from verse 26? Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress. And for their children, it will be a refuge. Once again, this fear is not speaking about trembling and a fear that keeps me at a distance. But this fear is speaking about awe and wonder and respect. And when I have that kind of relationship with God, it produces, the previous one, it produces faithfulness in my life. That I can be faithful in everything I do. I'm jumping back to the previous point. Right? So when I sit here, I am faithfully listening to the Word of God. Right? Many times we catch, catch, catch sounds so terrible. We caught you. 
We find that many times people are on their cell phones, on WhatsApp, or playing games, Ellen, um, during the services when they shouldn't be. Don't worry, it's not Ellen. I was just, just using his name. All right. I've many times sat at the back there, and then I'm just quickly scanning through my WhatsApps during the sermon, and then somebody comes in, and I'm quickly <laughs> put my phone down. There's a fear, a fear that came upon me. What fear is that? Fear that produces faithfulness or a fear that makes me want to hide? Make me want to hide my face? Makes me want to do things in the dark? If I respect the word and the presence of God, I would not be sitting there looking at my WhatsApps in the middle of the service. Unless it was really something urgent that somebody needed to send me. All right. It was preordained before the, before the foundation of the earth. All right. Are you guys with me? So in your workplace, what are you doing? Are you fearing God in your workplace with faithfulness? Because it's so easy to be unfaithful with your time there as well. Bring God into your workplace and be faithful. Bring God into your workplace and be fruitful. Bring God into your studies, into your school place and be faithful and fruitful. A lifestyle of faithfulness and fruitfulness because we fear and we respect his presence. And we know that God is omnipresent. Is that correct? He is omnipresent. Sometimes we just do not experience his tangible presence. Because we are not accessing it. His, his tangible presence is available. It's available for everyone. It's just you've got to access it. So if he is omnipresent, will you be doing the things that you are doing? In secret. If he is omnipresent, just imagine some of the things we do. By ourselves, would you do those things in front of other people? I would definitely not pick my nose in front of you, but I would pick my nose in secret. True story, true story, true. This is not a parable, it's a true story. Okay? But the things we do in secret, God is present. Sometimes we, we do them thinking that God is, somehow we think that God is not there. Or somehow we forget that God is omnipresent. Somehow we forget about his presence. Maybe because we do not respect his presence enough. But just keep in mind that he's omnipresent. And would you be doing the things that you've been doing in his presence? Would you be so unfaithful in his presence? All right? I'm not saying all of you are unfaithful. All right? That's not what I'm saying. But he's calling you to a lifestyle of Fear, reverence, or respect for his presence that will bring you into a place of faithfulness. That will bring you into a place of living an upright life. That, hey, Peter, you shouldn't be doing that. You know you shouldn't pick your nose in public. Right? When you have his presence with you continuously. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. We said that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you fear the Lord, it will be for you a secure fortress. If you revere Him, there's protection in that because you are living in faithfulness. You are walking in the protection of His presence. The protection of doing what is right. And this isn't just for you, this is for your children. What you are sowing today, what you are choosing today, is for your children. 
All right. What you're choosing to die is for your children. Psalm 103, verse 13. Let's go there. Open up your Bible. Page there. Sound like you never opened your Bible yet. Psalm 103. And verse 13, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. That was the point. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. There's compassion for those. There's a secure fortress for those. This is not just for you as an individual, but this is for you and your children and your children's children. Point number two, throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. So you made a choice when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you made a choice to cross over, to cross over the river, to cross over the Jordan. We're speaking about Joshua, right? And Joshua took the nation of Israel over, right? They crossed over into the promised land. So they transitioned from one leadership pattern into the next leadership pattern. They transitioned from a Moses leadership style to a Joshua leadership style. They transitioned from one land where there was a certain, certain type of gods there into a next land where there's different types of gods there, right? But... This people chose to cross over and follow God, but they were still faced with a choice. They were still faced with a choice. If it seems unpleasing to you, don't be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm. Some of us still catch ourselves being 50-50. Some of us still find ourselves being 50-50. Neither hot, neither cold, just in between. It's saying choose today. Right? Throw away. Oh, I'm jumping ahead. Right? Throw away the gods of your ancestors um, that your ancestors worshipped. You've crossed over. Now, one of the first things that they did when they crossed over was they circumcised all the men. Now, there was a practice in those days that you circumcise the children at day eight when they were born. Now, these are adults. Moses did not circumcise them. Now you are coming under a Joshua leadership. And this Joshua leadership is not afraid of using the sword or the scissor or the chopping board. And God says, circumcise all the men doesn't matter how old they are, if they were not circumcised, circumcise them. Deal with the flesh. When you are older, it's a bit more difficult to deal with the flesh, the ways you were used. I was so used to doing things this way. So used to doing things this way. It's so, it becomes more difficult to deal with those things. I don't know if you've noticed, but some of us come and sit on the same spot. Have you noticed that? Some of us come and sit on the same spot. And when somebody else comes and sits on your spot, and you come inside you, it's like... Hmm. Huh. I've been sitting on that spot for quite a while, and now you come and take it. All right? The longer you sit on that chair, doesn't mean your name is engraved in it. Maybe the size of your butt cheeks have been engraved on that chair. But it does not mean that is your place. But it becomes such a comfort zone. And those comfort zones need to be circumcised. Those traditions, those flesh areas of our lives 
need to be challenged. It's never nice when the next generation, the Joshua generation, a younger generation comes and tells you, hey, I'm going to circumcise you. Now you are being challenged by a next generation. And these have been the traditions for so long. My goodness, can this be God? This can't be God. <laughs> this can't be God. Well, maybe it is God. Deal with the flesh. That was one of the first things they did. Secondly, they had to deal with the idols. So many of us, it, we Christians, okay? Some of us have this kind of worship of idols still in our, our, our ancestry. Some of us don't have worship of idols, but we have issues. We have things that our families have been doing for centuries. We have ways of doing things. The Jones family is like this. Yeah, but that's how we are. You know, us Joneses are like that. Don't expect us to change. Or the Jones family struggles with their temper. That's just how we are. Or the Jones family struggles with whatever it is. You guys could be having a poverty mentality, struggling with a poverty mentality. You guys could be struggling with this thing or that thing, an anger issue, a... a um, judgment issue, a, a bitterness issue, an illness issue, but this is something that has come with the family. Those things sometimes become such a stronghold, become idols, become gods in our lives. You have chosen to cross over, deal with the flesh, deal with the gods. You've given your life to Christ. You've made God the center. Hopefully, he is the only God in your life. But now there's these other idols. These other idols are not just these little ornaments that you worship, but other things that hold you, that bind you, that get your attention, that consume your attention so much that God does not reign in your life. Sickness reigns, poverty reigns, anger reigns, lust reigns, divorce reigns. It's just the thing in our family. Throw away the gods of your ancestors, worship beyond the Euphrates River. Deal with the flesh. We see in Gideon, uh, in the book of Judges, we see that the angel of the Lord speaks to Gideon and says, go and throw over the idols of your families. These were Israelites. They were God's people, but they still had idols. God's people, unfortunately, still sometimes have idols in their lives. What is the idol in your life that consumes your attention, that consumes your worship, that consumes your affections? For now, nowadays, it's social media. All right? My children introduced me to a, a game called Hybrid Animals. Okay. I don't play games. I don't play games. That's just something I don't do. And now they introduced me to this thing. I, we actually wanted to see what they're doing. Because we don't like these game ideas and we wanted to see what they are doing. And all of a sudden I got hooked to this game. Hook, line and sinker. Although 98% of the, the people that play these games are between the age of 8 and, and 9. <clears throat> and here you've got this 42 year old playing this game here as well. So I got befriended by an 8 year old the other day. <laughs> Ah, well, they asked me for a friend because I don't know how old they were. Anyway, so I have eight-year-old friends, just by the way. And now this thing is consuming my time. Consuming my time. And the other night, uh, my children were doing homework. 
I'm remembering all of these things. I don't remember any of this stuff in the Afrikaans. Um, my children were doing homework, and the one son was finished with homework, and Esther was doing other stuff. And I'm sitting here at the table playing this. I have to play in secret because if, if the kids see me with my cell phone in the hand, then they're like, oh, are you playing? All right? So I'm sitting there at the table. The fear, there's no fear. And I just... And then the youngest son comes and sits there next to me and says, Dad, shouldn't you be reading Bible now? <laughs> okay. Anyway. So Gideon goes and he throws over the idols of his family and at night time, because he's afraid. He's afraid. All right. But even Christians have idols. Even people of God have idols in their lives. What are those idols that you need to throw over, cast down, break down in your life? Right? Make the difficult choices to deal with the idols. Learn from the mistakes of the previous generations. Build on the good Build on the good. Look, my parents were, were not the, always the, the greatest, but they were good. And there were good things as well. Okay, we didn't have the greatest upbringing, but there were good things as well. So take the good, build on the good, learn from the bad, don't judge, deal with the stuff, move forward, cross over, deal with the flesh. Okay, don't live in bondage and not cross over. Don't live in bondage and go back to Egypt. Okay? Um, Proverbs 13 verse 22. I'm just going to read that. You can maybe highlight it later. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. You are laying foundations. You are laying foundations. And what do we say in the previous point? Whoever fears the Lord has, secure, has a secure fortress and for their children it will be a refuge. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. What you're doing now, what you're choosing now, is not just for yourself, but it is for your children. It's not, this is not just about financial security for you and for your children and their children. This is about quality decisions. Some of us might never be able to provide mansions for our grandchildren, right? But can you provide spiritual and quality character stability for your grandchildren? Can you set that example? Can you change what, they, what could have been disaster? Can you change that? Point number three. Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Make quality decisions. Start today making quality decisions. God first in all facets of your house. God first in all facets of your house. It's, it's a little difficult when it comes to this, right? And uh, now with us, with the kids and that kind of thing, we, um, I'm not speaking out of the house all the time. I shouldn't be doing this. But sometimes with the gaming and that kind of stuff, it gets a little bit out of hand and they, they get obsessed about gaming to the point where we just want to freak out and smash those cell phones um, they only allowed to play over the weekend, half an hour on a Saturday, half an hour on a Sunday. And that in itself is like... Okay? It's minimalistic, but it's like so intense. All right? They get beyond themselves. So we decided then, okay, you guys will not play games unless you spend time with God. So we put that in place. Okay, so spend time with God and then you can play games. What do we do next weekend? Did we enforce that again? No. No, we didn't enforce that again. And we keep on, we, we like this. We to and fro and then we hear and they were, then they're manifesting and then they're not manifesting. Then they're manifesting. Choose today. Make quality decision, decisions. Who will you serve? Who is going to have the final say in your house? Social media, gaming, 
Formula One, lust, anger, judgment, bitterness, sickness, your eagerness to make a success, who will get center stage in your house? Sometimes we're willing to compromise. Oh, just a little compromise. Oh, yeah. On this story. Yeah. I'm going to watch that movie. How much, do, how much do they blaspheme in that movie? Oh, Ten times. But it's not like that movie where they blaspheme 20 times. Oh, that's hectic. 20 times compared to 10 times. Oh, sure. How much are you willing to compromise? And how are you compromising? How are you compromising? Because, you know, I, I can't remember what, whatever. Okay, the last, uh, fourth point over here. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Make a stand and remain standing. Make a stand and remain standing. So if you want your kids to spend time with God and make sure that they, they do that before they play games and they cannot play games if they haven't spent time with God, then make a stand and remain standing. Be constant. That social media of yours, that whatever it is of yours, make a stand and remain standing. Ephesians 6 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. And once you've done all of that, remain standing. Because those schemes, those fiery darts of the enemy are going to come at you. They are going to come for you. And you know what? You might grow weary. But you are going to have to remain standing. That's why you need to put on that armor of God. That's why you need to be able to equip yourself every day. That's why you need to be able to stand firm. Train yourself with the word. So easy to give in to the pressures of one, the ones we love and all the things we love. The ones we love. Or the things we love. Sometimes the ones we love can start demanding certain things and we start compromising a little. Or sometimes the things we love push, on, push our buttons. Mm. You know that I, I, I man, for a long time I, I decided I'm not going to go on Facebook because it's just a waste of my time and I got better things to do. I can read Bible and I can spend time with the Lord and this and that and that. Because I would catch myself, then I'm on Facebook, and then all of a sudden, here, yeah, two, three o'clock in the morning, I, I should be sleeping. I've got work tomorrow morning. Uh, then I'm still on Facebook. So I decided, yeah, man, this is nonsense. This thing is a, it steals my time. It takes me some, a place where I shouldn't even be. All right. It, it just consumes my mind. Right, so I decided never, okay, let's, let's stop that. And then the other day I thought, okay, but there's so many people that want to friend me from other countries because they know me from the ministry, ministry and that kind of stuff. And every now and then I will post certain things. So I thought, okay, maybe I must just get on there again. What happened? When I get on there, what do I do? Scroll through all the posts, scroll through, check all the videos, check all this, that, that. And by one o'clock in the morning, <gasps> should be sleeping just like that okay who will get priority make a stand and remain standing right if you stand now raise up a new standard isaiah 62 i'm going to finish with this the following two scriptures isaiah 62 open your bibles there isaiah 62 And we're reading from verse 10. 
Verse 10 says, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones and raise a banner for the nations. Pass through the gates, go through, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up a highway, remove the stones, remove the stones that so easily tripped you on that road. Rise up a highway, rise up a, create a new way of thinking, a new way of doing so that your, your, your generations, your children don't have to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to struggle over the same stones that you struggled with. But you are creating highways. This is not only speaking about um, new patterns, right? It's, it's you creating new physical patterns in your brains by the, the decisions that you are making, the quality decisions, the new decisions that you are making. Create highways. Highways over those rocky roads that you keep on stumbling over. And then it says, raise up a banner. Raise up a banner for the nations. For the nations to be able to see that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That it's not just a statement, but it is a testimony. It is a visible testimony of your life, of what they see in your family. Now, no family is going to be perfect. No family is going to be perfect. But may the fruit, may the fruit of your, your lifestyle be a testimony to the nations. Okay? Make it clear, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Habakkuk 2 verse 2, the last scripture. Write down the revelation. You've heard this scripture so many times. Habakkuk 2, 2. Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets that so that a herald may run with it. Make this statement clear. Make it easy for people to understand. Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy for your family to be able to take hold of and run with it so that they can stand and remain standing. You break forth, you break open the path, you create a highway so that they do not have to create their own highway. Their highway, you've, you've created a highway so they don't have to travel on this rocky road. What is their stumbling, what is their um, rocky road gonna be? Your highway. So what they are going to create is a jetway, for a lack of better English. Gau train. They're just going to excel. They're going to the next level. You created the highway. They're going to the next level. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Point one. Fear the Lord and serve Him with faithfulness. Point two, throw away the, the gods um, your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates. Point three, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Don't be lukewarm. Point four, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for who you are. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we pray that as this word has gone forth, we know that your word is spirit and life. And we pray that this will activate us. We pray that this seed will grow in us and will challenge us. Even, even though many of us have heard this, this before, we pray that we will put it into practice and be faithful with it. And that the fear of the Lord, the respect and the reverence of the Lord will be upon us our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And that we will be able to stand not only with a statement, not only with a slogan, but with a testimony that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.